All right, here we go. Oh, streaming live on Facebook. Hello. Your lip gloss is good, girl. You pop it now. <laughs> well, here we are. Here we are. You all live streaming right here on Facebook. Dunamis D, spiritual life relationship coach leader. You all know, but I am here, you all. Oh, my God. I got my clinics, y'all. I got my clinics. Um, <laughs> We are having an emotional healing reunion. And it is so many women uh, who have come through emotional healing clinic, but you see four beautiful women besides myself who are truly dunamis uh, that has been partaking uh, or did partake in emotional healing clinic for, oh, I don't know how long, I'm gonna let them tell the story. But Milan Rice and Darlene Roberts, Mima, Sharon, Connie, <laughs> how you all doing? Wow. You all doing well. Doing yes. well. Doing well. Absolutely wonderful. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Darlene, you are in the shy. Um, I am. Dealing with this. <laughs> or dealing with this. I am. Okay. Me too. Milan, you moved on to Arizona. That's a beautiful sure thing. Did. You did. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Mima, you moved on to Houston, Texas. Yes, ma'am. I moved on to the ATL. Kai, yeah. Right there, still in the shy. Yes. <laughs> you Darlene don't He's sound gone. very happy. He's, He's gone. gone. He's gone. <laughs> well, well, for, for all of those who are tuning in and viewing us, I want you all to, I want to just share your story. How did you get to emotional healing? clinic and why just tell us your story tell us your version tell us from a woman's standpoint who want to go first oh it's <laughs> now, come on me ma i'm gonna let you come on me ma with your beautiful self sharon i was bruised battered and a lot of it was my of my own doing but at the time i didn't know it mm -hmm. um starting from from teenage years and I didn't know which which direction to go I didn't know where to go what to do and even though I had been raised in the church I didn't even know how to go to God with what was going on with me I didn't know that not only was I the problem but I had the solution down inside of me and it took dunamis d to show me how to go down inside of myself and use the word to pull out all of the toxicity and all of the negativity that was inside of me, shake it out, look at it, and then piece by piece, heal it. It was just like the, the, the pieces of a puzzle. And one by one, I had to smooth out the edges and make them fit. But I could only do that through healing, through through communication and fellowship with my sisters. I know Dee and Man and Connie, boy, we did we did some serious crying. And, yeah. me and, and Milan came in, but I know we did some crying, some fall on your face, screaming and hollering and fighting, and I don't want to do it, and how come I got to do it, and nope, that's not me, and I didn't know. Uh-uh, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> nope, not going to happen. That's not going to happen. But, but God. That's all but I got. God. But, uh, but God. God. But God. Yeah. Yeah. And sitting over there looking like, um, oh, it was easy breeze, Lord Jesus. No, I'm not. No, <laughs> No, I'm not. Milan Rice. That's all, you know what? what Milan Rice. <laughs> I don't know why everybody say my even people here say my name like that. I don't. It's so funny to me. But that everybody um, calls you by your whole name, Milan yeah. Rice. Yeah, Milan I need, Rice. I need to patent that or trademark it or something. I, yeah. I I <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, for me, it was very simple. It was a a life or death situation. It's plain and simple. I was either going to die or I was going to live. And so at the point when I 
figured out it was a life and death situation. I didn't know that I was heading towards death. So I had a, a, a friend at the time that kept telling me, you know, um, listen to my situation. She was like, you need to go see Pastor D. And I was like, okay, you know, whatever. I ain't really want to hear none of that. And she kept saying, and I told her, I said, if you tell me, stop telling me about this Pastor D. I don't know who is this. And I remember saying that to her. And she was like, if you come, I won't ask you no more. I said, fine. So I came and pretty much never left. <laughs> you know, because, you know, I didn't even expect all of what I experienced because I think um, when I really think about it, um, I was really going to die, literally, uh, because I was. it was like my body was falling apart. My, I just felt disconnected from everything and everybody. You know, I didn't really care. It was just like I wasn't, I was existing. I wasn't really living. I think it was just at that crossroad. My body was, you know, in my mind. Because, you know, your cells and your body, if you give up your cells and your body, like, okay, well, we all going to die there. You know, so so going through that um, was probably the toughest thing I've ever done. Um, but when I look back on it, I realized that God was there the entire time. I realized how blessed I really was. I'm complaining about stuff that don't really matter, like really don't matter. And the result of that is, you know, being in this desert, this desert is healing. So I'm always in the mountains. I understand why everybody went to the mountains now. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're going into the mountains and you really, it's just, I got to know God for myself. Literally, I understand. I, I, I'm still, you know, building a relationship with God, but I under it's the relationship I have with Him now. Mm-hmm. I understand some things that I never understood before, mm-hmm. and I understand His the th- some of the things He says in, in, in the Word. I understand that. I'm like, oh, that's why He said, "Pray without ceasing." Okay, I get that. Oh, that's why He said, you know, what you know, whatever it may be at the time, you know. So, but yeah, it literally took the scales off my eyes, and I see things different especially men because I had a deep hatred for men I really did didn't really realize that including my father including anybody you know it was just because you know all my life all my pain came from a man at some point so I was just like you know the hell with you 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 don't you know whatever but I see it differently now so Mm -hmm. it 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 was definitely you know I'm living my best when they say living your best life I don't think this is my best life, but I'm definitely on the road to it. Yes, yes. There you yes, go. Yes, there you go. Yes, 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 yes. Darlene. Uh oh. Here come trouble. Here come, here come trouble. So. <clears throat> oh, I, I remember the day of this phone call. I, re- I, call, I remember I was, it like I was, yesterday. I remember uh, it like yesterday. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was in. I was. I didn't know nothing. And I and I knew I didn't know anything. I had just gotten married two days before I called you. Mm-hmm. And marriage number two, by the way. And two small children. Um, they were three, I'm sorry, four and five and one or something like that at the time. That's how long I've been knowing. Wow. Um, <clears throat> and I was... I knew, I knew, I was crying out. I knew that I needed some help because mm-hmm. I didn't know anything. I didn't have a clue. Mm-hmm. And I, I, through a mutual friend, I reached out um, to, to this friend and um, I was telling her what was going on. And she says, I know someone that um you can talk to and she gave me your phone number and i felt compelled to call i was that's how i was desperate Mm -hmm. and i called the number and this very nice lady answered the phone i didn't know i didn't even know i didn't know nothing i promise i called i was so reluctant when i called and i was like my name is darlene and I, I got your phone number and I was told to give you a call. And you was like, and your voice was so phenomenal. You were so pleasant and nice and, and welcoming. And um, you said, my, my name is Dee. And I have um, class on Friday in my home. 
And all you need to do is come with an open mind, a notebook, and your Bible. Yep. And I came, and I've been there ever since. <laughs> <laughs> and I received a gazillion, if that's a word, a gazillion dollars worth of therapy, tools, scripture to apply to my life, mm-hmm. fellowship. I met some awesome women. Mm-hmm. I've seen some women come and go, but I met some phenomenal yes, yes. women. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. Me and two, but them sisters that came through there? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I oh, learned yeah. so much, and I, every tool that you taught me, D, I swear I've taken it into womanhood. I do not make one decision out of my feelings. Not one. Trust me on that. And I don't want to cry. I miss you so much. But thank you. Thank you so much for teaching. Thank you for your teaching. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for your transparency. Thank you for thank Woo! you for forcing us. Thank you for challenging us and yes. forcing us. And yeah. you know, and and keeping a half a foot in our ass about getting up at five o'clock in the morning. Oh yeah, five o'clock yeah. in the morning. Oh God! <laughs> you know, thank you. She for only had half a foot. <laughs> yeah. You know, okay. thank you for teaching me. Thank you for teaching me. I knew y'all was gonna have me cry, but I <laughs> forgiveness. Thank you for, you know, thank, I, thank you for, I, you know, it's everything, everything that I've ever learned. When, I, when you, when you sent the email and said, we're going to have a reunion, every single thing I learned seemed to come back Russian. <laughs> you know, Russian, it came like a tsunami. Oh my gosh, she coming. We got, we got to get to, I was so, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so grateful. If nothing else, I am eternally grateful for your love, your friendship, your kindness. Thank you for teaching me dignity. You understand? And you still and married. And you married. You still you know, married. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And you got a strong man. So, Amen. 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 And, 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 um, it, but if I had not received the calling to call you. Yeah. I would I cannot say I would be in the same position right now having this honorable conversation with you. So peace to you and I love you so much. And, and that's what it takes, Darlene. So I gotta give it back to you. I gotta throw the ball back in your court and all of you all, because the open heart and the willingness and you all know so many didn't make it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because you, but you did because your heart, it wasn't even about me. It's your heart. And I got to say your love for Christ. You got to love the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to love the Lord. It's in our rebelliousness. You know, even even now, even, you know, I I forget to pray. mm -hmm. I don't pray. I'll be like, Lord, you got it. You know what? I just, I don't have the strength. Mm -hmm. I don't even have, you know what? Father God, what you need me to do? Mm-hmm. He said to me, get on your knees. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He said, get on your knees and pray. And my prayer was so simple. It said, mm-hmm. Lord, I just need you to walk with me every mm-hmm. step of the way. Because mm-hmm. I still don't know what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> That's it. You know? But we don't. But we don't know oh, what we're doing. Yeah. The funny part, when when I got the email for the reunion, I pulled out all of my notes. I Ooh, still I have. Need that. I need that. <laughs> No, man, yeah. these are mine. <laughs> these are mine. Houston. I'm coming to Houston. I know you are. These are mine. <laughs> I still have all of them. I have all of the, the notebooks, all of the material that you ever gave us. Lift I, it up. Let me see it. Lift it up. Let me see it. Don't have me go dig on man. I, I, <laughs> I got a whole bag, okay? I don't do. <laughs> These are just these are just my steno pads, but I still got all of the notebooks that you gave us from all of the classes, the the three ring binders. I still have it all right over awesome. here on my bookcase. Me too. You know, and, and the thing That's is, right. 
I, I need I need that because well, I ain't gonna get your your your, your, net, your notes, but it wasn't even about scriptures more so than the scriptures that led to the revelation, right? Uh -huh. You know, and it's the revelation of his word that he says he will build us up as a church. And uh -huh. so the revelation, and so when I'm when I'm in that vein. And when I was speaking, and naturally I wasn't recording, I wasn't videoing, I didn't do all that stuff like I do now. So I'm coming after your notes. <laughs> that's okay. But that's, that's because you weren't recording, you weren't doing all of that. But do you remember the acronym POOR? Passing, <laughs> passing over opportunities repeatedly. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. I said, ooh. There it is. <laughs> you making me want to go find mine. I'm like, wait a minute. Uh -huh. <laughs> whenever I move, whenever no, I, I, I don't want to move, I know where to get though. <laughs> whenever I move, I have one box that has nothing in it but my scriptural references. That's it. That's all that's in that box. One box of Bibles and one box of scriptural references because I can't lose that stuff. That's my lifeline. That's yes. my life. That's, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. That's what held me together when I was blubbering after we we were we were studying Samuel. I'll never forget that night because Michelle Obasi was holding on to me and I'm just like, I'm not going to do it. There is no way that I'm going to tell that man that I asked that man for forgiveness because I wasn't, a, no, I'm not going to do it. Jesus, I love you, but it's not going to happen. I'm not doing that. I don't know what you, what, what whatever you got to do, I'm not going to do that. This was your ex-husband? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not doing that. I'm just, I'm just not going to do that. I am not going to ask that man for forgiveness. I'm not doing it. I'm just, nope, I'm not going to do it. And he said, but if you be obedient and you do what I tell you to do, I promise you that I will reconcile you back to me and I will restore wow. what canker worm stole. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not, it's not going to happen. I'm not, I'm not doing it. As soon as, I, as soon as I got off of that plane, I called that man. Uh -huh. How long you all have been divorced? Uh, we got divorced December 3rd, 1991. <laughs> <laughs> so you called him when you got off the plane? Oh, oh Jesus. Girl, you scared me. Um, October 1st, 2011, when I got off of the plane, when I got down here. You know the, the, the picture that we see of the two doves or the two birds carrying the ribbon flying off. Yes. I know mine, mine was a railroad tie. When I did, when I was obedient and I did what God told me to do, I watched that railroad tie fly off with those two doves. Wow. 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 I felt the heaviness leave me. <laughs> Whew. Little girl, why? But isn't that wonderful though? Because you know what? The biggest thing I can say that I learned is on the other side of pain is freedom. Yes. Girl. That is the biggest thing that I learned. And so when it was one time when I, you know, because I can be stubborn a little bit. Just, just uh, a little no, no, let me let me let me just say <laughs> that. Oh, Milan, hold that thought. And Connie, I want you to go next. But all oh, y'all were stubborn. Oh, <laughs> us? Really? Oh, you are. But Did I know me. I wasn't stubborn. <laughs> Darlene, I know I wasn't. Me, <laughs> my My granddaddy. Uh, don't you say but, nothing. And Milan, I know you better not say anything. I'm my granddaddy is here, so you gotta, you gotta be good. <laughs> me and you would go to blows. Me and you would go to blows. I mean, Milan. <laughs> You all, Milan, will lock herself in the room for three days. Because <laughs> I had this thing in my head, if Jesus, he, you know, he he went through things in three days or two days, I could do the same trying to figure out my life. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just saying. Um, I, know I, was, I know I was stubborn. But, I know I was stubborn, but the thing about it is, I'm not 
I'm not saying I'm not stubborn now, but I'm nowhere near where I, where I used to be because I am seeking freedom for real. And anybody, and I do mean anybody who tries to disrupt my peace, I will let you go in two seconds because it ain't nothing like I that work too hard for it. Yeah. I work too hard for and, it. And Milan, that's what I tell people. I say, I work too hard for this peace. I can't just let this go because of any other peace. I can't no. do that. Yeah. yeah. I work too hard. I work too hard. To all the negativity and all that stuff. I can't. Yeah. I can't. I'll walk away in two seconds and be like, hey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Yeah. I'll pray for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so, Connie, what's your what's your take? Oh, how did I get to emotional healing? Uh-huh. Oh, well. <laughs> the way you say stubborn. Um, I was in this, you know, I was working with a, a couple. And I was invited to emotional healing several times, but I didn't go because it was eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> early, you had an early. So I get up at eight o'clock in the morning on the Saturday to go nowhere. But, uh, <clears throat> uh, but uh, one thing that did catch my eye was that at the time, um, it was the beginning of the year. You guys had just started reading the book of Jasabelle Spirit. Um, Yes. 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 So I had saw the flyer with that on there, and they were asking everybody else to go. So they had stopped asking me. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to go to that one. I want to go. So I did. I got up at eight o'clock in the morning on a Saturday and went to the emotional healing class, and that was all she wrote. (laughs) I've been there ever since. Yeah. So, I, you know, one thing I do believe is that God knows how to get everybody. And he used the best that he needs to get everybody where he wants them. And all of us, you know, in the, in the backdrop of my story is that I was a single parent, um, you know, abandoned, betrayed by men, repeated, repeatedly um, betrayed. I mean, betrayed, um, unloved. You know, I was just a hard, bitter woman. Ooh, Lord, did I say that out of my mouth? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's called deliverance for real. That's called healing. That's freedom. That's freedom. That's freedom. That's freedom. Yes. I was a hard, bitter woman. Um, and I was sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. And when I got there, I just knew in my inside that I was angry, but I didn't understand what I was angry about. So going through that whole process taught me about what I really was angry angry about. I had that release that Sharon had because I know you remember when she told me to get up and say that um, I had some fault with why my baby daddy left me. I, I'm telling you, my book that I was gonna go that day and I wasn't coming back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I was not gonna say that. Yeah, I was not gonna say that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I did. I did eventually come back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can. <laughs> and I did admit that I did have something to do with it. But um, through the counseling, I had that same thing. I promise you, the day that um, it was me, D, and my my kid's father, we had a counseling session. And I never had a release like that in my life of letting him go and letting that whole situation go. Because I don't think if that didn't happen that I would be where I am right now today with a husband and another child. And another child. And another child. And another child. Okay, let me tell you. (laughs) I remember your look when I prophesied to you, Connie, you was going to have another child. <laughs> oh, <stupid. laughs> Don't talk about that. <laughs> she hasn't gotten healed from that yet. <laughs> I remember she that. Like, she was like, D, don't say that. Oh, D, don't say that. I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, you couldn't have told me I was gonna have another child. Uh, uh-uh. uh, no way, not me. And you kept, you kept. She told you, and you was like, hmm, I don't know what you're talking to, but I know it ain't me. <laughs> but 
Well, you know, all of the whole situation. I still, I'm five years in and still can't believe the situation. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. He's five years old. You still can't believe it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What what was you all's greatest? Uh, what was the the topic of discussion that was that you that greatly caused you to take away a life change? I know Ooh. all y'all got y'all notes and stuff, but you ain't got to through them. Because I I know I taught I taught on the spirit of Jezebel for a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think for me it was strongholds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the yeah. strongholds because I had. I got a few. <laughs> Gerga shite all up and down, Gerga shite. Oh my God. I, I had a few. And, and the thing about it is when you are in pain and you have accepted that pain and you just living with it, you don't see all that. You like, mm-hmm. you like whatever. You like, okay, so. All right, I'm a Dergashite. What is that? How do you spell that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> and so hearing that, and um, it 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 helped you understand why you couldn't, why I didn't have this relationship with God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it helped me understand that. Even though when I look back on it now, he still was there because his words said he would never leave us for safety. He was there. I. Mm-hmm. Really remember certain things mm-hmm. and the thing about it was um just understanding what was going on in my soul mm-hmm. it was ugly I didn't mm-hmm. like it, you know mm-hmm. and um I can easily now I identify stuff that was going on with me I could see that in other people now what I used to do would be like oh no <laughs> I'm ready to go. but I understand I can sympathize and empathize with them because I understand because I was once that person yeah you know? yeah and yeah. so I don't, I don't believe that God brings you through stuff so you can keep it to yourself. You That's know? right. That's There's right. Thousands and millions of women, I women out here who have no idea how to get to where we are right now. They're That's right. Now that's the for, truth, Milan. That's the truth. They're right. looking for the answer. You know, they may not, you know, be getting it in the church they are. They may not be able. Like I, I listened last weekend to a bunch of women who are domestic violence victims. They couldn't mm-hmm. even get out the house. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. they're getting beat by the hood. So it's so many. What we learn is it's it's invaluable, and mm-hmm. and on top of learning who God is and what He has for you, what your purpose is, what you're supposed to be doing, it's it's freedom. You know, mm-hmm. you can pay what coming there. I came in there because I wanted a quick fix. I ain't gonna lie. I was like, fix. I thought she was uh Yama. I was like, this fix fix my life, B. <laughs> fix my life so I go about my business but it wasn't a quick fix because it was so much stuff and it's still residue of stuff that I see and I but at least I see it now and I know to go to prayer with it mm-hmm. yes 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 so, yes you know. yes you and that's huge right there you just said a huge I see it so now I know I can take it to God so many yeah. people don't even see stuff to take to God no idea right. yes yes yeah, so that, that, that I, think, I think for me it was remember when Eric um when Eric got it and he was teaching us the philosophy that he learned from the AA meetings that he had worked on with his sponsor about resentments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That was big for me because mm-hmm. it's like it released the unforgiveness that was inside of me. Mm-hmm. And when I, it, it was still there, even though I felt the freedom and I connected with a, a group of women down here and <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of years ago, I was, was given the honor of receiving the gift of the, the forgiveness award. Awesome. So I, I had worked on, on, on forgiveness and learning about the resentments and, mm-hmm. and continuing in the vein that you had taught me. Mm-hmm. And I really did. I learned how to forgive myself. Mm-hmm. And when, oh, she, when, when she told me that I was receiving that award that the, at the gala that year, I'm like, me? She said, you don't see the work that you've done. Mm. You don't see all the work that you've done on forgiveness and how you've helped other people see the resentments so that they can learn how to forgive themselves as well. 
Mm. Where your pain is is where your power is, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. That's that dunamis. But I wouldn't have learned it. I wouldn't have learned my dunamis, my dunamau, nor my dunamai. Yeah. Lord, <laughs> you really dig little crates. I yeah. <laughs> Wait, I told my I told my pastor down here how to say it. He was like, "Wait, where you get that from?" I say, "You don't want to know." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "That that's that that because that's the whole sermon for something else." He said, "We're gonna have to sit down and talk about that one." Yeah, that that lesson do them do do them do and do them ie. It's a difference yeah. of all those stages. Connie, yeah. you had your hand up. You was trying to say something. We wanted to. So since um, I I have anchor issues, um, the different parts of the brain, your frenario, your oh, wow. oh yeah, your grid, your peak view, the, uh, how things hit you, and how yeah. you react so based on the things that hit you and where it hits your brain at. Mm -hmm. That was key for me. That was like a turning point. I still be like, ooh, that person hit that umbridge right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, you know, because I just and, and I can't find my notes on that one. I cannot oh, find my funny. notes. I can. Because um, I, I just went through a situation this last week, um, personal and professional, that it hit that frenario, brought up some old stuff, and I had to attack it because if I didn't, it would it would come back. Yeah. And I, I think I handled it with grace. It might have been a little anger, but still, I stood up for myself in ways that I had never done before. And um, if it wasn't for that teaching, I wouldn't even understand how it hit me and bring this stuff up. Yeah. And it's yeah. something. Um, Another thing is, um, like Milan just said, the residue. I think we've all been in this long enough that when stuff starts coming back, it's bringing up residue to take us off to a different level. Because I'm telling you, things be coming. And I'll be like, oh my God, I dealt with this before. But until you get the lesson, you got to keep on going through it. And, and the so, thing is, and, 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 and yes, residue from, from some things can be there, but we have to understand that life is going to hit us anyway. You can't, you can't get away from life. Life is going to do life. But yep. the reality of it is now you recognize life. The, you know, we, we talk about the fruit of the spirit, uh, self-control and temperaments and kindness, but mm -hmm. oftentimes we can't exemplify that because we don't recognize when life has hit us that we know how to manage those emotions now. We know how to govern that, that our character will still exemplify that which Christ wants us to. So now it eliminates the fact that, oh, you know what? I told them off like this and I got to go repent, Lord. You know what I'm saying? You recognize how to govern your soul, how to, mm -hmm. how to be the captain of your soul <laughs> because life is going to come at us, period. No one is exempt. I don't care how much you talk, say Jesus is talking tongues or do whatever. Life is going to come. But you got to recognize how it's coming to you as woman and how to govern those, those, those emotions. And that's the key. You right. know? And I love it how uh, Milan said it. I recognize it. Now I can take that to God in prayer. Mm -hmm. right? But if she didn't recognize it, you ain't taking nothing to God in prayer. You just want God to do yes. something. And he right. can't do it because you got to get cleaned up from the inside out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you got it, Darlene. Did you? Yeah. Darlene got quiet. I, I just, I'm just relishing in the moment, but I'm so excited. <laughs> I, I was just, like, so much I want to say, <laughs> but um, one of the, uh, two things I really cared with me and um was spiritual warfare. Um, that's real. It's, um, I, it's it's my roots, you know. Remember the tree that? Um, oh yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Michelle, Michelle taught the class about the tree with the roots, mm -hmm. and you know, and and, and chop and chopping up those roots, and mm -hmm. you know, choose ye this day your weapon. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm 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 chopping up. I you know I I, I and you know I carry an axe. Because I don't want that root to come back. I remember um, firm, you know, as, as, as tall as the tree. Yeah. As long as the root. Those roots go around the block. Yeah. You know? yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, you know, you reminded me of that when uh, we were just talking yeah. earlier and you said you look just like your mother. Yeah. You know, you and I hear that often and my, my mother has dementia right now and I'm chopping that root up right Come now. on, Jesus. Yeah. I'm yeah. Doing that. Yeah. I'm chopping that right. I'm chopping that up right now. And, mm -hmm. and let me tell you how you chopping it up because of emotional healing. See, when we harbor things in our soul, it affects and bring Ooh. out these physical uh, yeah. diagnoses and ailments mm -hmm. because even our, my mother, she held so much in her soul. You know what I'm saying? And so those pains and those hurts and those inflictions, beautiful woman, love the Lord, can sing like 40 going north, but the woman still had the stuff harbored. Yes, you know what I'm saying? So now it produces those these things of diagnoses of various illnesses that we don't think is tied to our emotions, but the devil is a lie. It is. Yeah, it is. It's 100 it is. Real quick. Real mm -hmm. quick, and, and with that, you know, had I not been taught about um, Jezebel mm -hmm. and had I, her characteristic, her ways, you know, um, I wouldn't be able to check me when my Jezebel yeah. was up. Mm -hmm. um, or when my mother, even in her illness, when her Jezebel rise up, she was mm -hmm. always in her Jezebel. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. um, or when... Um, her, um, her, um, oh, I can't think of the, uh, I'm sorry. I, I can't think of the word right now. Um, perversion. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, all those things, these things, and I'm, I'm starting, I'm just beginning to witness these things through that illness. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I'm still, I still got to seek, I, I, I still got to learn more, you know, this thing. And if I didn't have emotional healing behind me to help me manage that, mm -hmm. I would be a wreck right now. And, mm -hmm. and, and the main thing is, is that the most difficult part now, this was very hard and you all could attest to this, but it was hard for me, not even just doing this assessment, but even teaching you all, not just look, learning about the spirit of Jezebel from an external standpoint, but looking in the mirror and looking at you. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of teachings, we look at external and looking at somebody else. No, remember that mirror? Mm -hmm. No, well, we are your mirrors too because it's something it was something in each one of us yeah like i could see me and you and vice versa and i think yeah. that's just how god operates because yeah. he wants you to, to see to see yourself so you yes. can work on you yes 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 and then too by me seeing myself in you now I humble myself and say milan milan humble herself and say connie we got to humble ourselves to right. bring to the place of healing you can't have healing without humility no you yeah can't. yeah you, you, you brought to your knees eventually <laughs> yeah yeah those was extensive processes how long were you around how long were you there Ms. Milan? how many years oh lord i i don't know um i think i left chicago in 2015 i think i came at the end of 2010 so about five years yeah, yeah. That, that one day turned to five years huh well, yeah, yeah. It was taking all day to help me fix my life. So yes, it took five years. Five yeah. years. You know that's my vision. Ayala Van had to have that show for women that they would really go through the emotional healing process. Yeah, that's, yeah. That, that, that's the vision of it. Wow, the 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 healing for my soul tour. You all know this bit of vision of mine for how long? Boom. As long as I've known you. Uh, yeah. yeah, as long as I've known you too. You've been talking about it. And I'm looking at notes from 10 years ago, right now, from 2008. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, all that, that God did within us, in, those, in that little room, you know, in Glenwood, in South Holland, you know what I mean? Yeah. Every Saturday, change of life every Sunday. Change we had this back, you know, but taking it out into the earth. Hmm. That's whoo, Jesus. What do you all have to say to the women? Come. It's a, it's an investment. You will not be disappointed. Mm -hmm. if, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and sick and tired of being sick and sick and sick and tired, this this is the place to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you want if you want actual results, register. Come out. Right. You all, and I'm looking at you all, and when you all came to emotional healing, 
you all wasn't, wasn't no shallow ghetto women. I mean, you all are degreed. You all are <laughs> professionals. You all are astute. You all are in managerial positions. You know well, what I'm saying? That but see, ain't nothing. <laughs> uh, uh, a lot of the women, you know, a lot of it is is the fear, the stubbornness that all of us possess. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, everybody continues to hold on to false evidence that's appearing real. That, hey. you know, that, that everybody holds on to that. They don't think about faith expectations actually realized or facing everything in mind. <laughs> you know, they don't think they don't think about that. Yes, I do. They need to they need to come so that that can get down in their spirit. So that when they look in the mirror, they can say, you know what, today. I can face everything and rise because mm -hmm. my faith expectations will actually be realized this day. Mm -hmm. And I like that person that's in the mirror. Yeah. 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 It yeah. took a long time to be able to say this is, I, I'll never forget it. I was telling this young lady this today, this she's, a, she's afraid because she doesn't know what to do. She's, a, she's addicted to Xanax because that's the only thing that she believes keeps her calm, but it also causes her to have seizures. And I told her, I said, baby, no, what you need to do is be able to look in the mirror and say, I love me some me. Mm -hmm. I said, and it took me a long time before I could get to the point of where I could say, I love me some me, baby. You better back that thing up. And she said, Miss Sharon, I love you. <laughs> I said, but that was work. That was work. That was years of work. But I said, now, you know, now you're, you're able to you know, hearing you and hearing Milan and all of you, are you all able to pour into women in your circle of influence now? You know, yeah. your your life is impacting other people's lives. You know, and that's 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 an apostolic movement. That is when you really are saying, What did Jesus do? He trained them, he he, right. he taught them, and 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 he said, Go, go. He didn't say right. six day, you know what I'm saying? Go. And that's the equipping of the saints. That's the, for the work of the ministry that in your workplace or wherever you go, you all are impacting lives. Yes. You do. Uh -huh. and yeah. intentionally. You know, when I talk to women, you know, the right now I'm, I'm the, probably the eldest, you know, at, at my job. And I remember one time you said, when people want to talk to you, they'll come look for you. Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, you don't have to go Ooh. see people out. They'll come fight you. So yeah. When they come and they talk to me, the first thing I tell them is get a sheet of get a sheet of paper mm -hmm. and oh, and and draw it in half. I mean, put a line down the middle, down the middle, and we talk about the difference between being a female and a woman. Ah, hey, come on, come on. Okay. My there first conversation with any young woman. And just to let her know about where she's making her decisions and, you know, how I apply it to my life. I still apply these tools to mm -hmm. my life. You know, come because it's, it's, it's necessary. It come, is. Mm -hmm. You know, the earth become, become for the urgency. Yes. You want yeah. to see immediate results. You are going to walk away with results you're going to walk away with answers you you're going to walk away with some knowledge your knowledge of self that's it you know, yeah come come with it i you know i i like to think of myself in the in the group is the one that you know a lot call me gangsta boo i was just thinking that <laughs> like, gangsta boo right there <laughs> And nothing, excuse me. I mean, for all you bougie women out there, it's it's it's, it's cool. Yeah. But for the for the for the but for the sisters out there that that's real, that 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 know what it's like to be hungry, that know what it's like to be poor in spirit and in, in your mind, don't yeah. know where something from the next day is gonna. You don't know where nothing is coming from. Come in that vein. Come, right. Yeah. Come, come hungry. Come expecting. 
You understand? Yeah. You will yeah. not be wasting yeah. your time if you come. Not to at all. You know, it's so necessary. We hear the cry. The cry mm -hmm. D. The cry still mm -hmm. exists, and it's yeah. even the more. Mm -hmm. You understand? I mean, I'm talking about desperation. Remember the class we had? We're in, we're in the emergency room and they yeah. got the defibrillator on us. Sorry, y'all were just right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yeah. But I remember, oh my God, you all remember it all. Y'all are really, if, if nothing else, are enlightening me. Theory. I'm coming after all y'all know. Y'all <laughs> Lord Jesus. But from the from the emotional healing clinic, the beautiful part is and change of life. You know, some came to emotional healing clinic. Some of y'all were there Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday. But to see the sisterhood, every day, like, yeah. Tuesday, Monday, yeah. to see the sisterhood, these are high You friends. all bond and you all had each other's back. Yes, you know, it's a unity. It's a unity. Mm -hmm. Yes, division try to come in. You know, that's yeah. the enemy's job. But to see us, look, you talk about her, no, that ain't gonna happen. When new women came in, when that division came, Connie, you was right there. Up, uh, up, uh, no, up, uh, no. That ain't gonna do that. That ain't what we do. Getting up at four o'clock in the morning, every morning praying for our men. Yeah. 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 I hated that. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna have a real truthful moment, you know, and, and it was because, like I said, it was because the pain I had that, that for men, every traumatic thing that ever happened to my life, it, it was a man, not just any man, a black man. So I had a strong disease. And so to get on a prayer call, I used to be human, like she woke me up for this. But, <laughs> <laughs> but now, what I see now, uh, because the one thing I do remember, is when God ministered love to me because I didn't love myself at all. Like mm -hmm. self-love is real. You can't love nobody, a husband, a sister, a mama, nobody until you love yourself. And that's just that's the, girl. That's just, you can't, it's impossible. But now I'm hearing, you know, I run into men all the time, you know, and not necessarily in a sexual manner, but when I talk to them, they are all, angry at God. I'm just going to be truthful. They angry. They don't believe in the Bible and all this, these things. And I used to be like, why are you telling me? But I, I understand because I was angry. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't think that I love God the way I thought I did, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And so having these men come to me and, you know, it just have a regular conversation and they don't believe in God. They, Jesus didn't die. And all these things, and it breaks my heart because I'm like, well, you're here. What do you believe in there? And then I ask them, I ask them, I say, what is love? And when you can't tell me what love is, that right there, it really breaks my heart because you have no idea. You're just here. And so, like I said before, taking what we we have that's inside of us, what God has downloaded in us, what we've learned, it is necessary because it is a 911 out here. Literally, mm -hmm, it, it, mm -hmm. it, it's just like, it just breaks my heart to see that. And so to see and hear everybody, you know, because, you know, I didn't know how much healing everybody got because I was selfish in a, in a way that I only cared about myself. You know, I really didn't, not that I didn't care about you guys, but I really, well, wanted yeah. to just, <laughs> I really just wanted to be free of how I felt. I didn't want to feel that way no more. Mm -hmm. You know, and I kept having to look at it and I, you know, and it's work. So when people come, what I'm going to say to you is do the work. Love yourself first. Mm -hmm. Love yourself first because now my relationship with my father and my mama is different. And yes, yes, yes. Very different. Very yes. different. The way we communicate with each other because I know my father loves me. He might not do all the stuff that I want him to do or he, I know he loves me. I see it. And even with my mother, I thought about is, you know, she may have said some harsh things to me in the past and all that. But I started when God had me going through a period of gratitude, mm -hmm. I started thinking about all the times my mother actually protected me and I didn't even realize. It. Come on now. Come on. I didn't now. even know. So yeah, and she was a hurt woman, but she still protected her children. And we didn't see that because we all in our own pain. 
So and, and the beautiful have, part yeah. is to see the, I don't care how old you are, Connie, you yeah. and your daughter, yeah. Milan, going mm -hmm. through your process that you may be able to come to this place to understand and receive your mother, regardless of how the woman still is. Yeah. You know, yeah. oh my God, Lynetta and Erica, Lord yeah. Jesus, you know, to see the relationship and how it was, but how it is now, that's the glory of God. It yes, definitely it is. Yes, it is. It yes, definitely it is. Because I'm definitely my mama's child. <laughs> and, you were, and you weren't saying that. You know? <laughs> you were mama. No, because I was putting blame on her. You should have did. You should. And the thing is, you know, I understood that she did what she knew to do. That was yeah. it. She yeah. knew. And at some point, you know, because I hear 72 year old people still blaming their mom. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. And so it's, it's needed. They don't mm -hmm. understand that when you get to a certain place, your parents have given you the tools. It's up to you to use them. Yeah. It's right. up it's up to you to actually decide you know because we come here with truth in us so we know truth when I, when we hear it that's why I never left mm -hmm. I, I, I know truth so mm -hmm. it just takes people hold on to trauma they hold on to pain because it's easier than fighting through the pain to get to freedom but mm -hmm. I can never tell people when you get to freedom I'm like I, think, I don't care what nobody think about me mm -hmm. that's I, the truth now that, now, and care. people don't understand that when you get to freedom because yeah. I, I, I don't care that. what nobody think about me because I got to be me. Right. Yeah, I don't care. It's a freedom in just being yourself and, you know, whoever that is, whoever you define that to be. And that's, and that's, what, and that's going through oh, all the weeks and months that we dealt with people pleasing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, mm -hmm. I was a huge people pleaser. Yeah. 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 I, I had no is my favorite word. Did I tell y'all that? I would tell somebody no. Two sides. I'm like, no, not today. Don't walk away. No, man. Oh, and walk away. Okay. And walk away. No way about it. Sentence. It is a complete sentence. No. Yeah, right. absolutely. <laughs> You're like, mm -mm. Yes. And, and confidence. You know, I didn't think I didn't have any confidence. I was very weak internally. You know, that lioness, she out. Yeah, she out. Right and that's one of the things that even God awakened in me for the Unleash the Woman Within. We all have a roar. We all have a, something that we're roaring about, not in a negative way, but it's who we are. And, that, and, and, that's, and that has to be awakened. That has to be. It has to be awakened. So mm -hmm. I'm just expecting a mighty move of God, and I don't know how all this is going to evolve, but I know it's going to evolve into greatness. I'm looking forward to you all being on stages, on platforms, and ministering to women in your own respective way. Yes. As dunamis yes. goes. Is that the green light? Is that, that, is that which, hold on, Chief? I'm coming after you. Like, <laughs> like, like, like Byron used to say, hold on, Chief. Hold on. <laughs> hold on, Chief. You know what I'm saying? Milan Rice. <laughs> And he was the one who started that too. He was the one who started all that, yeah. you know. But it, but it was a blessing. Y'all know I love y'all. We, we love you too. Are you about to cry? Yeah. Yeah. You know she <laughs> is. You that, that blink, that blink, <laughs> <laughs> that real flash, that real flash flutter. I get it. Right. It's okay. Milan, you said something about love, and you're telling the women to come. What they need to understand is you you want them to learn how to love themselves. Absolutely. What they need to learn is that love is an action word. Yes, it's, ma'am. It's it's something you have to do. You do. And yeah. if you want to learn to love yourself, you need to come so that she can explain to you what love is and how mm -hmm. to activate it. Because she okay. taught us that. You mm -hmm. spent a year on love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agape. Agape. Yeah. And remember, oh, last thing. Oh, my God. Oh, when we had Christmas, we never was able to buy gifts. No. Never. No. 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 I yeah. still don't. <laughs> I still but, don't. But we had to, we had to pick a name and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us. Yeah what to give out of what it was going to sacrifice and hurt us out of love. Mm -hmm. Can you love that person enough mm -hmm. to sacrifice to give up something in your life that you never, I, I, when I had to give that mink coat, you yeah. know what I'm saying? 
gave away diamonds, so trust me, I know. And, and to this day, I, I don't go buy Christmas gifts because it's about me the either. sacrifice. Mm-hmm. You know, and to, then you all had to minister to one another based upon what the Holy Spirit was saying. Oh my God! Yes, it was. Now that was, now that was a move of God all by itself. Yes. Yes. I kept praying. I was like, "Please take it back. I don't want to do it. I do not want to." And, and who He would give you all? It was somebody who would. It, it caused you to really go deep within your soul. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just Oh my God. I still have that statue. <laughs> that statue that Deborah gave me sits on top of my bookcase. That's my freedom lady. She sits there. I see her every day. That's my freedom. I yeah. look at her every single day. And I, I would have picked your statue. I had to wash a man's feet, a young man at that. And that was very hard for me to do that. I bet it was. Especially I when know. you had a, a hatred for black men and God had you washing the black, the black man's feet. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, I love you all to life. Yes, ma'am. Love yeah. you too, to life. Love you too, D. I do see yeah. oh, that my. there will be more and more and more as you all have paved the way. I see millions of women coming because it's a move of God and it's a revival. And I yeah. see you all right there in the midst. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? But here we are right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I start writing those soliloquies. And- yeah. <laughs> oh, look, I'm getting in a place called ready. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm getting in a place called ready because when you call me up, I'm coming. And I'm you coming. Come, I know. I know. And, and, and if it's been a long time coming for me, y'all know y'all, y'all coming because just hold on. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I must tell you, and I'm going to say this without crying. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. No. <laughs> Get your tissue ready. Look at her. She can't even talk. <laughs> Look at you, Milan. No, what you had to go through. To get to where you are right now. It was a lot. A whole lot. But you made it. Yeah. I did. All praises mm-hmm. due to God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yes. People don't know, but I know. God knows even the more. Mm-hmm. Night, night. Night. Love you. you standing. You standing with a great man. You standing with a real awesome man. You I am. He is phenomenal. He is. You're he standing. give me the business too, y'all. Don't think he don't. He don't. He do. Hey, Sean. You standing for you to come two days after marriage, and now it's been how many years? Oh, almost eleven. Eleven years. Wow. To God be the glory. Yes. To God be the glory. Come here, fat. Sharon Cowling, Mima. Yes, ma'am. That beautiful white hair. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Moved on, being the me ma that you are, impacting lives, loving on people. No, no. It ain't nothing but for God's glory. Yes. That's it. That's for it. God's glory. Keep impacting lives. Keep counseling. Right. Keep doing all what you're doing. Ooh, Connie. D. Hey. Hey. Remember the baby shower that we had for her, my that's daughter? Not her. That's not her. Please tell me that's not her. She'll be 10 March 30th. Mm-hmm. Oh, I feel wow. old. I, wow. I, I, I'm I'm to 50, but Lord, have mercy. Wow. Oh. You see how tall she is? That was the one with the baby shower. Yes. I remember that. I remember that. Wow. To God be the glory. Love you. Well, Connie, continue to be a healing hype. I'm going to give you a for all of us to say healing hype. Yeah. yeah. Get t shirts for us. You know, but continue on. So many didn't come on the line right now, but I'm going to, we're going to do this again, y'all. Y'all agree? We got to do it again. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of souls out there. There's a lot of souls out there. Yeah. I look to see you. And when I come meet Ma in Houston, I look to see you. All you got to do is let me know when you're going to be here. You know, I'm going to be right there front and center. Go to the bit.ly and register, bit.ly, Healing Tour 2019. I need you to tell women in Houston. Okay. I'll, I'll send it to you, okay? 
Yeah, please do. I will. I know. I know. But in where Houston, are you having? Where is it going to be? It's going to be at the Courtyard Marriott. Uh, don't ask me if it's hobby. I don't know, but I'll send you the link. Okay. <laughs> I wonder why. Okay. Well, I'm on my way Friday to California. From California, I'm going to Virginia. California. From Virginia, I'm going well. From Hampton, Virginia, I'm going to Arlington, Virginia. From Arlington, Virginia, I'm going to Houston, Texas. They messing me up on my flights because Chicago. I was supposed to go into Chicago in the morning, but the weather is not letting me get into Chicago. So I just had to spend another four hundred dollars on LA because I'm getting to LA. Do you hear me? I'm coming. You know so I have to come and pick you up from the airport. I can't get to Chicago. So I had to all those flights and everything that I made. The devil is alive, but that's why I'm pressing my way. Ain't nothing going to stop me. Because they ain't no flights. All the flights is messed up from Chicago. I was supposed to be in Chicago tomorrow. And then Ariel and I was flying to LA. So she can't probably get out of LA. So I had to come out now. I had to re get some more tickets. But the devil is alive. But y'all know me. I'm a warrior. Y'all know me. Yeah, I'm yeah. a warrior. <laughs> Oh yeah. 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 Alicia, I'm a warrior. Yeah. You can't yeah. Me. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I love you all. Y'all be well. Love y'all. Love y'all. Yeah. All right. Have a good one. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.